Welcome back to the special edition. With me now is Dimitri Deliani, a member of the Fatah Revolutionary Council. Welcome back, Mr. Deliani. Thanks for having me. And Mr. Dov Liebman, member of Israeli Parliament of the Yesh Atid Party. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Thanks very much for joining me. So I want to touch on something that we got to a little bit in uh, the previous half hour of our program. We've spoken a lot about is this the third intifada, is this the next uh, step, without looking too much uh, back historically. Not to the Bible, let's say, which it often gets to in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. There are many similarities between now and October of 2000, including especially perhaps the situation with Arab Israelis. Yeah. Is, it, uh, is it the same thing in a new form? Well, I, I think we are living an uprising in, in East Jerusalem, at least. Uh, occupied East Jerusalem has been suffering a great deal of tension, uh, suffocation, uh, siege. Uh, even when the people look at the wall uh, surrounding the other parts of the West Bank, they don't see it as, as a wall that really severs the ties between East Jerusalem and its natural uh, continuity in the rest of the West Bank. So this suffocation, Israeli uh, discriminatory uh, uh, practices, uh, violence, uh, desecration of uh, uh, Muslim sites, especially uh, Muslim sites in Al-Aqsa Mosque or Al-Haram Sharif, all this brings out a lot of tension. And when Muhammad Abu Khdir was burnt alive uh, in, in, a, uh, in a brutal murder that is not, I mean, that that is not on the level of humanity does not differ from the murder of the the three Israelis. Of the three Israeli teens in the but, West Bank but that preceded. Politically, it's a whole different story. Here, there's story. always something but preceding since, everything else. Since then, else. since July 2nd, it has been going. We have everyday uh, uh, confrontations in Jerusalem. So far, we have seven uh, Jerusalemites were killed. We have 1,000 injuries. We have 900 arrests. Out of out of the 900, 420 were presented to uh, uh, Israeli courts. This creates tension. Um, and on top of that, the government, the Israeli government, not issuing uh, an investigative uh, committee to the uh, brutal murder in, in Kufur Kanna adds to it. We are uh, at a point that the Israeli people we have to refer to the Israeli people to decide because Netanyahu and the nut jobs like uh, Bennett, Lieberman, the Israeli people have to see them for who they are really and where they're dragging the state of Israel to. Coming, coming from Israeli parliament. Sure. From the Eshati party, albeit not Benjamin Netanyahu's party, do you agree? I disagree and I actually want to take issue with some of the things that were just said. Let, let's make some order here. There is a full investigation going on right now as we speak regarding what happened the other night and I'll be the first to say if it is concluded that the policemen acted improperly, they should be disciplined and they should be punished. The way some of the ministers in the government spoke, I feel, was bombastic. It was the wrong way to approach it. There's an investigation. Let's see exactly what happened. But I want to hear the Arab leaders the Palestinian leaders who are so quick to jump on this particular issue and call it a murder and denounce it and reject it the way they have do the same when a driver takes a car and kills innocent civilians, Jews and non-Jews, by the way, when they, there's an assassination attempt against Yehuda Glick. I want to hear that same level of condemnation. And one last point. Arab Israelis en masse, I believe, want to live peacefully in a state of Israel. I believe there is tremendous incitement that's, that's going on right now, including incitement that we just heard right now, desecration of the Al-Aqsa Mosque because Jews want to go there. I, by the way, don't go there. But to use that terminology, desecration, the term that's used when people deface property or destroy someplace because people want to go there, I think it's time for the Arab side and the Palestinian side, including our guest over here, to reduce the tensions. I'm willing to do that on the Israeli side. Are you willing to do that on the Palestinian side? I'm, 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 I, have to Mount, I have to I, I will absolutely I have to let you respond. That. But it, one question. In terms of the Temple Mount, does he have a point, and this is a segue for you to respond, don't worry, that if Neta this has been the status quo of the Temple Mount for a while, Netanyahu is reiterated, we are not changing the status quo. Why now in terms of okay. the uproar over okay. the Temple Mount? Now, we have to know, why do I say desecration? Because the 
owners of, of the place, in my eyes, considered a desecration. Why do they do that? Because Israeli settlers, when they come in, they drink alcohol. In, and, I'm, I'm, we, have to, look, we, we have to be able to have a conversation I've, I've on seen, facts I, and not I, based I've on seen it. speculation I've, I've seen from some extremists. No, no, I've seen it. No, no. This is absurd. I've seen it. And the Palestinians who play soccer up there and dump there. their garbage okay. there. Let's no, be dump fair garbage, here. No, Let's be but fair. play soccer, yes. And so, that is allowed. Uh, look, you cannot put rules for people. They make their own rules and their holy side. They say yes for soccer, no for alcohol. You have to respect that. I wish that. the Palestinian leadership would take my that. approach now, the of second, facts and I'm, let's I'm, I'm, talk is, on a level of fact and have to, not on speculation and incitement. Get, it's not spec there is no speculation at all. The claim Please. right now is that we desecrate the site because settlers go to drink and, alcohol and, in the no, Temple no, Mount. No, no, this no, is no, the first no, time no, I, as a member of parliament, even heard such a suggestion. you got to let me finish this, okay? They don't go to drink alcohol as in terms of hanging out and listening to music. As part of ritual. And I've seen it with my own eyes. What rituals? I don't know. I don't know much. I don't they know as much as you They can't even utter a Hebrew sentence look, up there, and they don't. They look. Whatever they do is felt by the owners of the place as desecration. Therefore, it is. If you go to the states, I mean, you were born in the states, and you claim that you are black on your form. You say I'm African American. Nobody has the right to do, to dispute that because that's what you consider yourself. Nobody has and no one can tell an African American not to pray somewhere, and no one should no, tell no, a Jew that no, they can't but, pray but somewhere. Let's something. be fair. Would you and allow, let's reduce okay, the inside. Can I ask you one question? The the Western Wall, which is in Arabic called Hat al Barak, has been historically part of Al Haram al Sharif. Would you allow Muslims to pray there? I personally would have zero problem if I was standing at the Western Wall and a Muslim stood I'm, next to me I'm, and prayed. I've had Christians do that. I would have no problem. I'm happy. Let's that's bring the level control. to that point let's where we can do that. Let's pause for a Israel, moment. Gentlemen, gentlemen, let's pause for a moment and go back to the word extremists. Yeah. Because it is very clear in all of these conversations, it always, there, there's always reference to the extremism on the Jewish Israeli settler side. Yeah. There is absolutely extremism. On the Palestinian side, yes. there is extremism. Yes. If both sides continue to speak to each other in terms of their own extremists, that is not to speak to the more moderate uh, parts of their society, but rather to say these uh, four people, these 20 people do X, Y, Z, how will this ever get anywhere? Look, I, I, uh, I always say this, that both sides have their extremists, but the only difference is that the Israeli extremists are in power and ours are being managed. If, we, if somebody tells me that people like Bennett, Netanyahu, Lieberman, are not extremists, then I, I, I don't know what mainstream means anymore. But the thing is that what, what I truly believe inside, that the Israeli people, just the average Joe on the street, wants peace, wants to divide the land, wants to have nice neighborly relations. This is what the average Palestinian would want. Now, the thing is that this rhetoric going on, this whole uh, employing religion for politics, employing four and five thousand year old texts to determine to, tomorrow's you don't politics, think, though, that the Palestinians has been, has as been well invoke the religion as a basis problem. for yes, any claims? No, no, we have, no, well, Fatah is a secular, secular right. party, just like Ashatid. Uh, we are but, uh, but again, Yeshati is not the entire Israeli government, I know, and I know, you I know, are I speaking no, to what, a greater What amazes government. me is that there's somehow a problem with us invoking texts that are very dear to us and claims to places that are very dear to us. That's rejected, but yet we're supposed to listen to the other side. Let's both hear each other's claims and work something out. But let's remember you know something why? else. Let's remember something else. You religion, referenced before the brutal murder of an Arab boy during the summer. Everyone within the Israeli government, everyone spoke out against it. Everyone condemned it. The people should be brought to justice for it. Do we hear the same thing yes. from the Palestinians? We yes. do, yes. really. Yes. When, it, when President Jews President are murdered Abbas, in cold no. blood, President do we? Abbas, or, or President did Abbas, President Abbas no, no. send a no, letter no, no, of condolence no, no, to the no, no, family no, no. of the no, terrorist no, no. who shot you? Look, answer yes or no. Did he send no, that letter? Gonna, yes, he did. But How I, can you claim okay. to be on the same level this of is, us in terms of being even-handed? No, 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 no. We want to go there. I'll tell you. I do want to go there. Yes. Okay, then we will do that. When the three Israeli uh, settler boys sit waiting for a car. Settler boys, you have me, to throw that in there, you, right? Can you, I didn't, I didn't cut you off, but you were saying things that I disagree with. So settler please, boys. Yeah, the settler boys. As if boys. they did something wrong by going to school, they went. You had to throw that in Look, there. So I acknowledge a innocent but, Arab no, boy. Let me this, for is, a moment. this is not. They also weren't settlers. Like they let were me, setting an yeshiva, I let, believe, let, let for, let me, let me for accuracy. These Thank you. boys, three settler boys, were in a West Bank under. Israeli control uh, they weren't settlers, uh, security. But they were in the West Bank. They were Okay, they were in, in they the were they were in the West Bank. Anyway, I'm not making excuses. When they were kidnapped, uh, Mahmoud Abbas condemned the attack, 
the kidnapping, promised to help out, gave orders on TV, and you know how unpopular that is. 100%, and we praised gave, him for it. Okay, and, and he did that. And when they, they were found uh, 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 murdered, he contacted Hamas, and he talked to their leaders, and they denied anything at the beginning. And when they admitted to it, we had a huge political problem, internal problem. So we don't only talk and pay lip service. We're willing to pay politically for what we consider wrong. Now, let me tell you about the letter that he sent to uh, a Shalodi family. That incident, that particular incident, the, uh, the, the, not the Shalodi, um, uh, the guy that uh, attempted, uh, had an attempt on, on Glick's life. That guy was murdered by Israeli police. That guy was struck in the back. So in any way, you send the condolences. He was no threat. You should, as a person that you consider yourself at a higher, at a high moral moral stand, yes. I expect you to uh, uh, form a committee to investigate how all these guys get killed on the spot after there's no threat from them. You're not willing to do that because simply they're not Jews. If they were, you would. That's a horrible thing to say. Let's remember that, that this past Friday, truth. excuse the me, this past horrible. Friday, I spent the entire day in Beit Jana paying respects to a non-Jew who died in the terrorist attack in Jerusalem. To yeah. suggest that I would not honor a non-Jew, you said Jew and not Jew. Let's be yeah. very clear. Yeah. I will give honor to every single non-Jew. Yeah. Let's live together but in he, peace. But you should speak out right here and condemn and condemn the letter, he was, the letter he was of condolences. No, no, and no, until no, you do no, that, no. there is no even-handed moral oh, gentlemen, ground. No, no, gentlemen, no, no. gentlemen, gentlemen. On I, I, that note, that. on that That's, note. No, the, the fact that we can not understand that if this man was, they were able to catch him, and they were able to, to we know try him, this and then you find he shot at the police. Falsely, One falsely, he was shot in the back. And you find people <laughs> Let's go in a different can, direction. And whose story Dimitri. is that? Whose story is that? You police. I have a different story. You have to understand that your information comes from different sources. My information comes from the people that led it. Let's very zoom convenient. out. That's very convenient. Gentlemen, let's of zoom out for a moment. These situations, unfortunately, in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, there are infinite such cases as what we're discussing yeah. now. Infinite. We could be here all night discussing them and not even begin to agree. Mm. Let's look a bit at each side, because it's very easy and something that uh, the Palestinian Authority and the Israeli government are perhaps very good at doing is blaming each other. Netanyahu is certainly good at uh, pointing blame uh, somewhere else. But of course, it's very easy to issue blame, and it's much more difficult to look internally at, uh, at your own problems. First of all, on the Israeli side, what sure. What is the Israeli government doing wrong? What does the Israeli government need to fix to get out of this mess? Let's remember that I'm uh, a member of a party that believes in two states for two people. I'm a person in personally who wants to see the Palestinians have their own self-determination and the ability to create a state. I believe that the biggest issue here is trust. I believe there's mistrust on both sides. Uh, there's mistrust from the Israeli side towards the Palestinians. Are they really interested in resolving the conflict? And there's mistrust on the, from the Palestinians towards the Israelis. Are we trying Really interested. I believe that if we were really serious, we should be moving forward with trust building measures that can be done. We need to be in constant including negotiations. Settlements. Uh, including certainly not, not building new settlements outside the major blocks. I think that areas that doesn't help towards uh, developing trust amongst the Palestinians, I would call on the Palestinian side at the same time to break its partnership with Hamas. The Palestinians, the Fatah movement, very courageously courageously rejected terrorism, understands that there is a Israeli state in, in existence, as opposed to Hamas, which continues to have in their charter the destruction of the state of Israel. So both sides have what to do, but I hope that my counterpart here can acknowledge that on his side as well, that partnership makes it very difficult for the Israeli side to move forward Dimitri, towards an agreement. What is the status? I, I did, well, I'm, I'm curious, because Bef before Operation Protective Edge, before yeah. the summer's war between Israel and Hamas, there was a lot of talk of the budding unity government between Fatah and Hamas. The war kind of put it on hold, though, of course, what's behind the scenes, we don't know. And in the last week, just in the last few days, we've seen a lot of uh, very tense incidents yes. between the two. What is the status? The, well, this is the thing. It's not a unity government. It's a reconciliation government. None of its members are Hamas members or affiliated uh, with Hamas. We want to uh, uh, work with this government as independent technocrat government with the approval of Fatah Hamas and the rest of the factions. It's not only two factions in order to cross to a point where we can hold elections because we believe that the Palestinian people will have the final say. You want it Fatah way or you want it Hamas way. And we have to give people that, 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 that kind of right. Now, 
uh, when we are talking about um, working on both sides, this is one thing that I really cannot understand why many Israelis, many enlightened Israelis cannot see that we cannot be equal. We are people under occupation. If you think that we are equal, we have the same privileges as you, then maybe you'll get the whole scene wrong. We are people living under occupation. We don't have the freedoms that you have. We are subject to much stronger... I don't want to give you those freedoms. No, no, so you let's don't, do that. Don't. <laughs> no, you as a person, you might. And I understand that. A majority of Israelis and, believe in it. But the government, but who gets elected to the government? Libra events Bennett and Netanyahu. These are the ones calling Before the shots. Before we go your back party, into the Israeli no, side. I, I just want one thing. You, you're, push it to us. No, you, you're, it's not. Look, I'm, I'm not. I acknowledge things that we have to change. I acknowledge okay. that. Can you acknowledge that I, there are things on your side that have to we change? We have a lot of work so to do. So say, state them publicly. To, I know. I, I know we have a lot of things to do in terms of attitude, how to resolve this. As long as there are people voting for, uh, for parties or factions that do not recognize that there is a state called the state of Israel right next to us and we have to make peace with that state in order for us to have a good life, then there is something wrong with the awareness, with political awareness, with moral issues. There are a lot of things. So I deal with them. But the thing is that to put us both as equally responsible, you cannot put the victim and whoever is committing the crime. And please don't tell me that occupation, military occupation is not a crime. If you want to go is back. Is it a crime or not? Would you answer me? There sir? is no crime being committed right now at all. If you go back through military history, occupation. I don't want to do that. There's so no. If, you, let's, if occupation let's go, is not wrong, why do you want to withdraw? If you want to go back throughout all of Why history to, and see all the stages, so but that's in order to claim a crime. Gentlemen, again, to we're on an endless narrative because yeah. the victim can be claimed on both sides, sides extensively. No, no, Let's, there's a third the entity. Crime that's been committed. If you want to talk to again, it can be a lot of both. What? Including the occupation, there can be a lot of uh, both sides. Okay. There is a third entity. Yes. There is a third entity, which is Gaza. Let's join That's that to the conversation. Thing. Well, there's a third player in the global picture of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, I would say. Dr. Hani Basus, a doctor of political science at the Islamic University of Gaza, joins us now from the Gaza Strip. Dr. Basus, good evening. Good evening. So perhaps you've heard a bit of our conversation here. How, first of all, uh, can you describe a bit, how, how do Gaza residents view what is happening now in East Jerusalem, for example? Well, first of all, Gaza is part of the Palestinian land, and it's not something isolated. Uh, people of the Gaza Strip believe all the time they uh, have been already isolated by, uh, by the Palestinian Authority and by the outside world. But at the same time, they are so connected in terms of soul and believe connected to, to the Palestinians in Jerusalem and in the West Bank and other places. And this is why we have seen in Gaza uh, protests and demonstrations and statements, statements made by all Palestinian factions. The people went out in the street um, uh, calling for an end for the occupation and calling for restoration of life for people in Jerusalem, especially when you talk about Al-Aqsa Mosque, people early in the Gaza Strip believe and focusing much about the importance of this mosque and the city of Jerusalem. They do not feel that they are really isolated as people or believing uh, uh, as um, this piece of land is something separate from the whole of Palestine. Despite the fact that life is being difficult for all people in Gaza, and it's indescribable, you cannot believe the standard of living in the Gaza Strip and the um, fear and the threat of uh, an attack which could be coming soon in the next future from the Israeli side or maybe the uh, clashes within the Palestinian society in the Gaza Strip because of the tension between Fatah and Hamas and, and because of the severe living conditions in the Gaza Strip. But it's because of this situation, as I said again, like we have seen last Friday in Gaza here, um, many people out in the street in the Gaza City, in the north end of Gaza Strip and in Khan Yunis area, um, they were um, they were protesting against uh, what was happening with Jerusalem and the calling for opening the Al Aqsa Mosque for all people to pray and have a freedom of movement, and especially in Gaza. People like we all in the Gaza Strip, less than two million, we cannot reach to um, to Al Aqsa Mosque. We cannot we are not able to move out of the Gaza Strip. And as I said, like Gaza has been, as you mentioned, it's not an entity, but it's it's kind of small enclave it's been has been isolated from all uh, 
uh, location from all Dr. corners. Basus, uh, Dr. Basus, how further do residents, do Gaza residents view Abbas and his government? Well, um, Abbas, uh, for people in Gaza Strip, um, he is the president of the Palestinian Authority, of course, but he's not the one has been doing his best to protect people in Gaza. As the head of the Palestinian Authority, people believe he's supposed, he's supposed to watch and he's supposed to help people in the Gaza Strip to live a decent life, but he's not doing, his, he's not doing even the least he can do to help, especially um, after the summer war in which... Um, uh, thousands and tens of thousands of families have been out of the street, um, evacuated their homes, and it's still up to now. I think the Palestinian Authority, led by Mr. Mahmoud Abbas, is not uh, doing as much as it could in the West Bank. So, is there a degree terrible. of disappointment? Hello. Yes, Dr. Basus. Is I'm asking, is there a degree of disappointment? It is. Well, um, people are so disappointed in the Gaza about the. Um, about the attitude and about the activities of the Palestinian Authority, uh, they are feeling, they feel they have been left behind by their president, by the Palestinian Authority, and um, disappointed so much. And I think this would do uh, more degradation in life and, and people uh, frustrated at the situation, at politics, at the social aspect. And they are calling for social change, not you, they call, they're calling for political change. Uh, Palestinian political landscape as it is, is not helping much. And when you talk about Jerusalem and you talk about the West Bank, people living completely different life. Gaza Strip, them it yes. and open a prison. Um, Doctor, uh, have a yes, please, please continue. We have just a, a short while. Oh, it sounded not clear. I cannot hear you well. You know what, Dr. Basus, we, we actually, the line is not too good, so thanks for now very much for, for this, Dr. Hani Basus in the Gaza Strip. Some criticism towards the Palestinian Authority, a little bit of disappointment he expresses. Is that felt among Palestinians in the West Bank as well, disappointment towards the Abbas government? Well, I wouldn't take what he said uh, face value uh, as a member of faculty of Islamic University, uh, Hamas movement hub. Uh, I wouldn't take, uh, I would take it with a grain of salt. You know that the blame is pointed at uh, Hamas and the popularity of Fatah and President Mahmoud Abbas is on the rise in Gaza, especially after the last uh, attacks on, on Fatah leaders in Gaza in which Hamas is held responsible for the bombings of their property and, and cars and stuff like that. But anyway, this is an internal issue. But I, I believe that uh, as, as part of the process of rebuilding Gaza, we have a we have a lot to work for. We we have and we have to cooperate with everybody in the region in order to be able to undo the atrocities that were caused by the Israeli government. I see governments. you moving in your seat, sure. Mr. Lithan. Think about the tragedy here, the tragedy for the people of Gaza, that they're being incited to go out to the streets over a so-called desecration at the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Temple Mount, instead of leaders rising them up out of their streets to demand a better way of life, that the money that goes there should be used to rebuild their lives, and they should be giving a better quality of life. They're being incited about something false at the Temple Mount instead of the real issues on the ground. Real leadership would not incite them with these false claims. I even saw desecration on the screen right now, which we heard was some claim about alcohol, which is completely unsubstantiated. No, no, and instead of that, no, the leadership should be saying, we are here to help the Palestinian people. They deserve a good quality of life. That's what the focus should be right now and nothing else. Uh, I don't think that's right because the desecration to the Al-Aqsa Mosque is not only the alcohol drinking. You see, you go on Facebook, you'll see a Quran on, on the ground. You see stepped on. You see rugs burned, uh, <laughs> shots fired into it. No, I'm I'm sorry. For somebody that's trying to um, discredit something that not only I've seen, I, I've lived. I've been shot in while I was inside the mosque. So nobody tells me nobody shoots. The claim there. is that we want to take there it over no and there's throw there's the Muslims fact. out. Can you state right here right know. now that that's know. not the case? Can you what? say right here that there is no truth yes. to the we, libel that Israelis want to throw the Muslims attitudes, off? Attitudes. Attitudes you towards won't say Israel. No, look, attitudes towards Israel is not going to change as long as Israel is still committing crimes against us by settlement settlement activity. I sit by here, I Judea sat here, and I said Jerusalem. we should not do so. By, by keeping us under siege, by all these border And control, what do the Palestinians the have walls, to do? And what by, do the Palestinians have to change? Do I have to pay a price to live equally or to I'm live asking, free? what should you change to do make I it have, work? Look, You're unwilling I'm to say, pay, I think no, it's no, very no, clear. No, I said so what it. I had to say. I tell you what I have to... If, if the question that you're looking for, very simple, I have to resist you and your government until I get my own state.
Let if me take that shame, for a moment. I th- that's if you a shame. think that my we'll wife... We'll never get anywhere if, if you keep with that attitude. If, if we will think, never get anywhere if you are a moderate you leadership think, and this is what you're saying. Listen you to think, the Israeli moderate think, leadership. Think, What's the Palestinian moderate leadership all, saying? If you think <laughs> that my right to statehood is a choice of yours, you are wrong. Let's give uh, quickly a response and I want to take it somewhere else. Absolutely. The moderate Israeli leadership is ready to make courageous, very difficult, painful choices. The shame, as we've heard right here, is that the libel and the incitement from even the moderate Palestinian leadership continues. Real change will happen the moment the moderate leadership on both sides are willing to acknowledge their flaws and willing to look forward and move forward. And I've sat here right now and I walk away somewhat pessimistic. If this is the moderate Palestinian voice, incitement, claims of things that are simply unsure on the Israeli side, we will never get anywhere. My hope and prayer is that that changes. That we on the Israeli moderate side take over the leadership, yes, but that we hear a strong, courageous Palestinian moderate leadership not go with the extremism, not going with the excitement, leading the people to a better life. And if that happens on both sides, we'll be able to move forward and live side by side the same way we're able to do with the moderate Israeli Arabs, with the Druze and everyone else that I mentioned before. For a moment, I want to take the word of resistance as an example. We started by asking, by speaking about October 2000, Mm -hmm. if there's any similarities between now and the second intifada. Hasn't history proven in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, we could arguably uh, globally, that an uprising like this, like the Intifada, did not prove positive results for the Palestinians? The, the, there's difference. We had two experiences, the first Intifada and the second Intifada. The first one was peaceful, uh, popular movement, and it proved to be successful. It brought Israel to recognize us as people to begin with and signed the Oslo Accords. The second one was violent and it was wrong. And we learn from that. And from July 2nd until today, we go in the peaceful way. So we learned our lesson and we're moving forward. But I have to say uh, one thing regarding Israel needs to be to to hold itself responsible. We can't have Knesset member sitting and trying to say, let's do this together. We can't, you cannot put me in a headlock and squeeze and then force me to say I love you. And when I do, then you t- say it's not enough. Unfortunately, not we're happen. out of time. But I think if there's a bottom line to be taken from this, it's that self-reflection uh, does have value for everyone, individuals, and on both sides and both governments. Uh, Mr. Dov Lippmann, Dimitri Deliani, thanks Thank very you. much for being Thank with you. me. That's it for us for now. Two-minute break, and then we'll be back with more of the special edition. Don't go anywhere. Thank you.